Now we're going to go to Moscow. We've got uh, eSports. We're going to be with Adam. The CSGO Blast Pro Series, Adam. No maps up yet, so we can't get too giddy. We've got, we've got outright, so we're going to have a look at it a bit later. But give me the emphasis on this tournament. Just to be clear, I'm not in Moscow. It, w it would be cool if uh, one day uh, Odds Market was sending uh, esports correspondents to all the tournaments to uh, report live. But I'm still in uh, rainy England. Um, but yes, looking forward to uh, the tournament coming up. Um, it's an interesting one. Uh, we'll get into the outrights in just a second. Um, this is a tournament featuring five teams that are all going through a roster change of some sort, either this week or next week. Um, so it's very much a, um, I think there's some significant opportunity to um, catch just the team that maybe has a bit more practice early on or um, has get, developed the team chemistry with uh, their new addition the, the, the quickest. And why do they do this? Why, why do they have a roster change when everything was going so well for them in the first place? Yeah, well, it's something I've actually laughed about with uh, colleagues quite a bit over the years. Um, Esports is one of, especially Counter-Strike um, and Dota, um, it's one of those um, domains at the moment where if things aren't clicking in within a span of, say, I don't know, six months to a year, it's because the pieces aren't right. And uh, there's very little emphasis to this point in esports on coaching, on uh, building. I, okay, you, you have to back up. A lot of these players come from, uh, unlike team sports, I mean, this is a team game, but unlike team sports where you build social skills, um, working closely face to face with people, um, a lot of these 17, 18 year old kids are coming up into professional gaming not having the skill set of dealing with um, other professionals so even I'm just gonna adjust my camera there so even though they're used to um, you know talking uh, you know via the internet uh, about calls mid-game live um, what needs to be done their interpersonal and team building and leadership uh, those are qualities that take much longer and they're not really that developed and nurtured so far in the professional scene um, so if there's problems within a team it's usually very quick in which okay well it must be X and X player who's who's the lowest performing player um, is it the you know the strategy that's not working very rarely do coaches come in with the um, mindset it's my job to balance the personalities of the team as well as the overall strategy um, and approach tactically. So, um, yeah, it, it's very it's very annoying, I guess, as a as a better to see that. But it also opens up opportunities for sort of um, they call them honeymoon periods. You know that that's something that does happen in professional sports as well, where new additions will just click. And everything, you know, the motivation is very high because, you know, we got rid of the, you know, sour grape that was in the, the locker room, so to speak. And now we are motivated to prove that that other player was the problem. And we've got all the pieces now to uh, win a tournament or make a run uh, over a period. Adam, uh, when, when I look at these teams and then if you have like, how many do we have? We have, say, five man teams. Yeah, that's right. So if I have a five-man team, are they all living in the same area? Do they actually get together? Or have we got players now that are all over the world and they just come together for the tournaments? So esports has gone through evolutions of, in the early 2000s, it was players could be on a team for quite like a, a year or six months or more and never actually meet each other. Then we went in the, I guess, early like 2010 to 2014 period where team houses started to become really big. And they still exist. Like There are esports team houses where um, the organizations will pay for the five or six man team, including a coach or a manager, to come and live in some quite nice facilities, um, either in the States or Europe. And now we're moving towards no... It would be great to have the team all located in the same, you know, city area, 
But like professional sports, we found it's actually better for team chemistry that they treat this like a job. They're coming to work for practice, but they don't need to live together in the same space 24-7 where, sure, if everything's great and they're all buddies, it works. But if, you know, we've seen with, you know, shows like The Ultimate Fighter or, you know, Big Brother where you're in the same space, even if things start off rosy, um, you know, little quirks of having bad roommates or um, not being best friends can cause um, the professional part of your team well, to this fall. Go- so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I agree with you because I find that the majority of these people who are, they're insular. They basically, it's them and their surroundings and the interaction of the game. Now, you all of a sudden put the, the, the weight of other people's personalities on them it's obviously going to go pear shape unless you have a spe- special type of character. Now, yes. I watched a program recently where there was esports gamers that were mm. vying for an F1 job. It was like, wow. it was, it, yeah, um, but the level of skill that these gamers had, I mean, there was like 16 of them from all over the world. They got them down to the last two and they were actually performing just from uh, simulation from a game to go yeah. and, and help F1 teams. And I mean, one of them got a job uh-huh. with Mercedes because, because he, he was yes. that, he was that in, insular. It was, it was like brilliant to watch, but you also thought, has he got a life other than sitting in that chair? Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing is um, you need, to, when, we, when they talk about um, sort of veterans within esports, you know, the Astralis team that just won the major on the, on the weekend, um, they've won three majors in the past two years, and the average age is 23 years old. They're the most dominant team in esports history, but they're called the most professional team because they don't kick their players. They have a coach who is their, like, dad. He is their, their true leader. He manages them. He comes up with their strategies. But... They, they were also the first team in CSGO to hire a sports psychologist to deal with their issues under pressure on the stage and in uh, late game or late tournament scenarios where they were sort of um, prone to choking um, when, when the stakes were the highest. So the model that Astralis sets in esports is we need to treat this as though we're professional athletes or you know any professional anything really um and we're not going to cut corners re- uh, pertaining to our mental health our physical health um and even though they, they talk about the camaraderie and the brotherhood of the team these aren't five players that live together they are they go their separate ways when they return to denmark and i think esports team i mean even the complexity team that was bought by the dallas cowboys um in, in Texas there, they they have a facility in Texas that where they will, uh, they have a workup facility and their practice rooms. Uh, it's all state of the art, uh, world class stuff, um, but they aren't, t- it's not team houses. And that's, as, the, as more money pours into esports, I think that's the stage three of, you know, developing true professionals, um, interpersonal professionals as well. Well, I, I actually, I'm not going to declare too, too much too early, but I actually have a family member who's putting a team together for the new uh, COD coming out uh, soon, I believe. Oh, wow. So, um, so hopefully we'll, yeah. get, we'll get him on there and he, he can start boring yeah. me because I'll be like trying to pick his brains and he'll just not give anything away. <laughs> so, uh, but listen, first of all, we're going to have a look at a few of these outrights, please, Rafa. Rafa, yes. can you put that up? You're, Rafa's been a bit on fire today. He's like, <laughs> not quite, he's reaction time. He probably put some of the gamers to shame. Uh, so we're going to have a look here. You can see that, can you? Yeah, I can see okay, it. Okay, talk me through it. Okay, so the tournament, yes, Moscow. Um, it's the sort of hub. Uh, esports is very big in, in Russia in the CIS region. Um, and Blast Pro Series is a tournament um, uh, organizer that chooses locations all over the world that maybe commonly don't get tournaments. I, I say that kind of lightly, but um, they do throw them everywhere. Like there was one in Turkey, there's one in Brazil, um, one in Miami. Um, and the one in Moscow is featuring 
Nottis Vincere, Team Vitality, Ants, MIBR, Ninjas in Pajamas. And then there is uh, a, a final spot play-in between Avangar, who are recently the major finalists on Sunday, and Fours, who are a Russian squad that were eliminated um, in the major qualifier. Um, now, I, I, I'll, I'll go, Raph, if you don't mind putting the odds back up, I'll just talk through the prices, actually. Um, Navi is the outright favorite, and a lot of that has to do with they are the only squad at this point that is not that has not kicked any of their players, but their in-game leader, Zeus, just announced on Monday that he is retiring after the major. and Sorry, after Moscow. Um, it's it's a huge deal. He's played the game for 20 years, um, and he has been the source of a lot of ridicule, I guess, for why Nadas Vincere has not won a major. Uh, he did win a major when he was kicked from the team two years back, uh, and he went to another... Um, CIS team so then he was brought in and the expectation having the best player in the world simple on the team um, and as well as some other elite players was that he was going to deliver a championship a major trophy specifically um, so with that announcement and with all the other teams making roster changes um, either post major or during the major um, it doesn't surprise me that Navi is the outright fave and I do think there's value on them I have not. I don't. I can't remember the last time I took Navi on an outright, uh, if ever. I, I'm I'm thinking back like four years now, and I'm not sure if I've ever done it. Maybe it was MLG Columbus 2016. I'm thinking of laying money on them for this tournament. I think the fact that Zeus is retiring, it's in Moscow. He's Ukrainian, but this is he has been the face of Ukrainian and Russian Counter Strike for most of the game since 2000. 12 or whatever he formed uh he was leading not navi so i think this tournament is going to mean a lot adam seems to have crashed out there he was in full flow telling us that the favorites at 3.25 natus vincere they were uh he thinks it might well be a uh, home champion we're going to try and get him back until then I'll, uh, I'll just run through what Craig Edwards was saying, that his nap of the weekend at the Greenbrier Classic is Jason Cockrack at top 20 at 2.38. I've seen it. It's odds on elsewhere. Uh, I threw in Kevin Nahr at 33s. Uh, outright, Russell Henley at 41. Robert Streb, 66. Brand, uh, Brendan Hadji at 101. Brendan Todd at 126. And Tom Potter, former winner at this course, 2012, at 200 to 1. Rafa, do we feel we're going to get him back? Well, we won't try too hard, you know. He was working hard, the lad. He's probably gone for a little rest. Uh, we'll, give it, we'll give it one last go, and if we don't get, we don't get him then obviously I can go through what we've got coming up tomorrow. Wednesday, Serie A, Bundesliga. It's just La Liga. Then we go Premier League punters. It's just full on now. Last of the 2020 Euro qualifiers is today as we speak. There's gonna, they're going to be kicking off. So massive week from tomorrow. We're going to try Adam. Adam's back. Ad, you all right? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it's your internet because... Uh, well, it's always someone else's fault. Into trouble. Yeah, it's always easier <laughs> to blame others. You know that. That's why you're not in one of them teams. <laughs> They'd have you out, wouldn't they? Um, yeah, so all I was saying was I, this, is a, uh, this is a great spot to finally, for me anyway, to finally take Navi. That's how, that's how I'm feeling coming in. I've only seen pricing at Unibet so far for the outrights. I don't know if most of the other books are waiting for the play-in to complete, so you might have to check that back on Friday afternoon. But would you take would you uh, take the three point two five now before the before the others join the queue? No, I don't think there's any need to. I think we'll see above e a three at every at every book um, or should. And the and the reason being, if we're looking in terms of um, talent level and sort of form over the past six months, Team Vitality ants. Um, are also right up there with Navi. Um, both of those, I mean, Vitality has had some really good matches with 
Navi at the last major in February. Um, and Ents has beat Navi and beat Vitality, and Vitality's beat Ents. They're all those three teams should, are all priced about where I would say they should be. Um, but the only outright I will, if I do, and I will tweet it out or uh, put it in the article, will be to take Navi on the outright. Um, and we can also look at some match lines um, if if you want to move on to that when you're ready. Yeah, you fire away. You tell me. I've not got the graphics because obviously you didn't <laughs> send them over. So that's your fault, not mine. <laughs> um, so starting with the play-in on Friday, um, Avangar playing fours. Now, Avangar, just as I said, they played in the grand final of the biggest CSGO tournament in the second half of the year. They, they were a team that previously hadn't even qualified to the main event of a major. Um, so they really punched above their weight uh, getting that far. I was impressed with them. I had them in the final at five and a half. They got destroyed by Astralis. That's sometimes the way these big dogs go. Um, but here they're pl- priced against fours, a team that they've crushed in the past year. And they're priced at 1.8 at Pinnacle. Well, now it's 1.79. I grabbed them at 1.8 about an hour and a half ago. Um, I can't understand why the price is so good here. You know, um, one thing we, we could talk about, Flash, is sometimes teams with travel in sports, they have a sort of hangover of sorts or uh, jet lag. How have uh, you just said that? Just- How have you just said that? I've just wrote down hangover or confidence boost from from the last tournament. That's so funny. That's and and this is one of those times where I didn't have an article to send you for you to even go off of. So why don't you start us off then? Well, I, I, you <laughs> see, this is the thing. I just worry about some of these teams that have not got the experience or long, of longevity, if you like, of being able to go from tournament to tournament. Because what the good ones do is. As soon as that one's gone, that's gone. And they're obviously focused on this one. But then you have a a dog who comes in and does so well, they'll all be congratulating themselves. They'll all be partying in their head, even if it's not like going out. Because remember, these are not the type of boys that are going to be going out nightclubbing because they'd rather go back and sit in their chairs. But what I'm saying is, so is is it an emotional hangover or is it a confidence boost of, right, lads, that's how we did it last time. Let's repeat the dose. So... There is, we, we've, we've found this before, is Avangar, or sorry, uh, CSGO teams returning from LAN. It's called the post-LAN hangover, if you want to call it. Um, and they'll return to their on, their individual houses and their play will suffer for a bit. Because one, the hype of playing on a stage, playing you know in front of a crowd, being with your team, uh, you know, having your energy drinks or whatever other sort of um, substance you're using to get uh, really uh, in the game uh, is not with you. And the play does suffer. Now, this is different because they're going from one land to another. And yet I do think that baked into this price is that sort of travel from Berlin to Moscow, um, sort of regression to, you know... Skill-wise, Avangar is not that much better than Fours. They have they played much better than Fours at the major, um, but they also they also I guess fit the right bunch of teams to get to where they got. I'm not going to say that it was a lucky run, but they didn't have to go up against Astralis in the group stage, which maybe if they had, they would have been a limp. You, you never know what the way things work. I'm not saying. They are a top five team in the in um, in the world right now. I'm simply saying I can't understand the price on Avangar other than to say people, the lines or the general betting public is expecting them to feel uh, a hangover post major. Now it's very difficult. Now, but the thing is, is they're being priced at 1.8, not 1.5. So you can't say the value is on fours here, given what we've seen. I, I, I just, I don't know how you could play fours except to anticipate that Avangar will not play well. That's, that's really, but, but unless you have insider information into that, you're based, you're, you're purely making assumptions and that doesn't lead to consistent results in a betting aspect when you're trying to guess the psyche and the morale in a team without having that info that without, knowing certainly that that information so 
I'm going to go with Avangar. Um, I put a unit and a half down on them on the money line. I'm not going to get involved in maps if they're down a map or live betting. If they don't show up to play, just cut cut it. This is a gimme price. If they are ready to go, it should be you know um, fairly convincing, I would say, six, seven round differential if they're playing like they did at the major. Um, so that was my first play uh, on Friday, and that's the first match. I think it's kicking off our time. Um, you got the time? And f- oh, I've got it here. Uh, it's two days, 16 hours from now. So, yeah, it'll be afternoon. Um, so for you European guys, you can get that down in the morning and if you want to wait for maps or something like that. Um, but I do think there's significant value in what we've seen from Avangar. And they're playing Fours, who it wasn't like Fours was also a playoff team. Fours bowed out um, at the qualifier. They lost to Dream Eaters as a heavy favorite. So I, I, I don't see the value in taking Fours at even money or 2.1 or whatever they're at. Okay, Ad, we're going to wrap it up. We, we think that I'm going to go with you, with Nat V, but there again, why wouldn't I go with you when you're the one up there answering my questions and putting <laughs> us all on the, uh, on the right track? Keep us updated, uh, obviously, on Twitter and in your article with, uh, obviously, what's going to go on once the maps come out. And, uh, and I look yep. forward to having a chat with you again soon. Absolutely. So just one thing, I will have an article out on the 12th, that's Thursday, and I'll have all of my plays for the, at least the opening round and an outright, um, as always. And by the way, the articles, uh, uh, even though I didn't have a good CSGO major, articles on the Dota International and the CSGO major crushed it. I think we're up 19 units and 60% over the last six weeks. So um, definitely check out the article. Um, talking to you, Flash, and I'm talking to anybody watching the video. Yeah, listen, you don't get on this show unless you're crushing it. So just uh, <laughs> just, by, just by being on and me saying, by the way, we're going over to Adam, means you're crushing it. Because, again, we'll have to do a roster change when myself and Nat <laughs> sit down and decide who's in the team. I've just got to make sure that I'm still in the team, so I'll just keep my end up as, uh, as well. Ad, thanks for your work, mate. Keep going, and uh, we'll speak to you soon.